This is the team of Island Air. Every day, they risk everything. The Kodiak Peaks and Wicked Seas make the island the world's most treacherous place to fly. These are the tales of Alaska's ultimate bush pilots. During hunting season, Island Air transports hundreds of hunters around Kodiak. Today, they're flying a group to Eagle Harbor for their annual Sitka black-tailed deer hunt. That's one of the beauties of living in Alaska is you, can, you have a lot of opportunities to, to do hunts like this. Pretty fortunate to be able to do this. Eagle Harbor is 30 miles southwest of the basin in an isolated and remote part of the island. Teeming with dangerous brown bears, hunting here is only for the very experienced. It's remote and uh, there's no road system to it. It's only accessible by boat or airplane. Beautiful place. A fast moving cold front from the Bering Sea has created colossal waves, making the harbor a perilous landing strip. A single wave can easily slam a plane into the rugged rocks. So for now, the hunters are in a holding pattern. Island Air, this is Emily. Oh, dang. Eagle Harbor is a no-go. Um, the swells are too big. There's no way we'll be able to get the float planes in there. Those swells break onto the beach, and you have to be able to manipulate that airplane. Handling these planes in Kodiak's wild weather takes hours of intense training. 18 months ago, pilot Peter Rosendahl began flying float planes at Island Air. His training with Bob has been a rigorous education in expert aviation. You notice how it shifts? Add a little power. Cut it. Cut it, cut it, cut it. It's there. Too late. Too late. We're just going to call it good for now. OK. Absolutely essential knowledge to master the third most dangerous profession in the world. To do this job, you need to be pretty confident in what you do. Uh, you definitely learn from your mistakes. Um, take, take every flight and apply it to the next flight. Today is Peter's final exam. Bob will take him to Marka Lake, about 30 miles northwest of Island Air. The lake is tough to navigate due to its short landing sites and rocks hidden just under the water. It's kind of like teaching your teenager to drive the first time. You can imagine giving them the car and it's a nice Camaro with a 300 plus horsepower. Okay, we're gonna enter the freeway <laughs> for the first time, so I'm a nervous wreck. Dear Lord, keep us safe. <laughs> but it's a technical little place here. That's uh... I get it right here. Yeah, that's it. Okay. But you can see the one rock on the corner. Yeah, I think I see it just below the water over there. I don't want to get too tight on that rock now. There you go. Okay, push it over, push it over, push it over. Power back. Okay, round it out. All the way. I'm gonna have to probably do it on a turn. You got it? Yep. Okay. It's got to come back. What is his training thing? Like, he's over there talking a whole lot and telling me what, how he wants it to be done and how it should be done. You got to take the, the loud talking or yelling, whatever you want to call it, you know, with the bit of salt. He did good. He did real good. I mean, I was impressed. Made it out, didn't bend any metal, so didn't seem to scare Bob too much. So. I'm proud of him. And so he did a really good job on it. I trust him.
impressed, Pete. You know, I just kept my mind go back to last year when you saw him doing that training. That's why we train. It's pretty badass, <laughs> actually. Top dog today. <laughs> Hey guys, what's happening? Hi. Hey, how hey. you doing? Welcome to Kodiak. Thank you. I got uh, two sightseers going out. We're going to show them the island, show them the sights. Mike and his wife, Stacy, have recently moved to Kodiak from Phoenix. Big, big difference from Phoenix to Alaska. I mean, big is an understatement. <laughs> it's a huge difference. <laughs> to get to know their new home, they're taking a sightseeing flight around the island with Peter. So this is the uh, De Havilland Beaver. Have y'all ever been in a beaver before? No. no. Fantastic. Well, it's an awesome airplane. How long have you been in a beaver? Uh, well, I got here this morning about 8 o'clock. So, oh. yeah. so here we go. Being the first time on a float plane, a little nervous, but I know it'll be the views will be worth it. Riding in a Kodiak bush plane isn't like flying on a commercial airliner. High winds, wind shears, and squalls can cause massive turbulence and appear out of nowhere. Big Tower Beaver, kind of want to go on the base and got Romeo, and we'll head out towards Calcium Bay. Can we just take off really fast? Uh, yeah, it'll be pretty quick. So there's no complimentary drinks? <laughs> uh... <laughs> Here we go. Oh, God. A lot different than a... I don't know if I should look at close my eyes. Oh, that's so different. We're cruising here at 600 feet right now, just so we can see stuff a little bit better. Wow, such a different view. You fly around all day. Is this your happy place, or do you have a happier happy place? <laughs> <laughs> no, this is my happy place. <laughs> have you ever had to leave anybody? Uh, just the ornery passengers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got some guts down there. Oh, there's a bunch of them. Wow. Yeah, they're running on stuff full speed that you can hardly stand on. Wow. That's pretty cool. Every day is a new adventure, that's for sure. All right, guys, it might be getting a little bit bumpy here. Oh. Yeah, that wind coming up over that mountain is close. I don't like when you do that, Peter. The storm that grounded the hunters has expanded quickly, throwing winter squalls right into Peter's flight path. Sudden squalls have kicked up, and the weather is deteriorating fast. When you're flying around, you know, the whole time you're thinking about a million things a minute, but you always got to keep your composure, and uh, you may look calm and collected on the outside, but on the inside you're going crazy thinking about what can go wrong, what you need to do to make it all right. So we're also playing with the wind factor here. Peter decides to cut the flight short and put down at the closest body of water to fish and wait out the weather. stay grounded until the squalls pass. What did y'all think about that flight? The oh, views? Yeah. Very nice. The turbulence? Mm, not a big fan. <laughs> <Did> yeah. <go? laughs> yeah. But on the ground, Mike and Stacy face other threats. You got some activity going on out here somewhere. Holy guacamole. Kodiak brown bears can grow to be more than 10 feet tall and weigh over 1,500 pounds. Are you trained in first aid survival? <laughs> Peter knows the bears shouldn't pose a problem this time of year. 
It's the end of salmon season, and bears are more interested in hibernation than people. OK, fishy, fishy. I need you in my life. I'm going to get that one right there. That one's mine. Look, you see that big old fish grab it? Wow, you That's see that? the same one I'm going for. Go try over there. Let me stick my thunder when it comes to fish. Oh, I got it. Oh, I got something. Ooh. <laughs> oh, my god. What happened? Look at I caught some grass. <laughs> uh oh, there's another one. Look, got him. Oh, that's grass. a big one. Oh. <laughs> if it wasn't for bush planes, I wouldn't be catching all these big old salmon out here. Come on. <laughs> hey, Stace. Yeah. Check this guy out. Oh, that's pretty big. <laughs> nice catch, babe. Thank you. Oh. Sorry, buddy. I got it, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, time to go. Thank you. <laughs> got a big salmon in Alaska. Gentlemen, this is the best experience I've had in my life. The squalls have passed, and Peter is cleared to fly. The interrupted flight seeing tour has paid off in spades with Mike's salmon and Stacy's first ever float plane ride. I would do it again. I would definitely do it again. Pete has aced his first ride with passengers. If you ask me what my job is, it's, it's training. It's to watch who is out there. So when my customer asks me, who's flying? Who's the new guy? We have new guys every 18 months. It's an 18-month commitment. We don't rush it. It just, uh, there's, there's a lot to cover and a lot of confidence to build, never knowing what's around the next corner. You know, you have to be, you got to go to your happy place. And if you can't do that, then uh, this is not the place to fly. Although it's not hitting the entire island, the storm has intensified on the southwest side. We've got a pretty good storm moving in on us now, bringing us heavy rain and some big winds. And now 10-foot seas are forecasted to come in here. Bad news for a group of hunters who are trying to get to Eagle Harbor 30 miles southwest of Island Air. Pretty typical in Alaska, you know, any you go, you go on a remote hunt, you know, and it's uh, you're always gonna weather's always a factor. Hunters will get stuck here in Kodiak. The weather will be too bad here, or where we're trying to get to. Weather days are always a fun time at Island Air. Clients can get crabby, especially when a storm decides to stick around for days. I have you scheduled to go out to Eagle Harbor with us today. Weather is not looking good for that area. The wind is blowing pretty hard, and so we won't be able to fly you out there. Good morning, Jay. More bad news. I just heard from Eagle Harbor, though, and they have big swells, and so we cannot get it to the beach today. Uh, no, we're not up again today. Oh, you're killing me here. Everybody's kind of getting really antsy and tensions get high, but um, you know we're just trying to provide a safe transportation service to and from their from their hunt. Sometimes people want you to fly when you know darn well you shouldn't. It's not safe for you. It's not safe for them. The biggest challenge for bush pilots is learning when to say no. Saying no today might be the difference between life and death. An intense cold front from the Bering Sea has Kodiak in a stranglehold. The storm has kept Island Air's planes grounded for the past six days, frustrating for a group of hunters who are stuck in Kodiak until the storm passes. We've been trying to get out to Eagle Harbor for six days. It's coming in. Sometimes these storms don't stop for 20 days. Yeah. Holy moly. It's described as the worst weather in the world, and its unpredictability can wreak havoc on everyone.
was about 20 years ago, and I tell you, it really messed with me. I was going along right where we're at now, and right about now, I should have been climbing. We have a wind that's a little different. It would have been coming from my right, but in that day, it was the left. And I started right down this, this pass, but I was, I'll tell you, I was quite a bit lower. I was literally skipping along the, uh, the surface, and I could not get the plane to come up. To this day, I do not know why it didn't rise. And I was right about here, literally at treetop level, staring at those trees right in front of me. I should have been able to just climb, climb like a bat out of hell going out of there. Could not get the plane to climb. I said a prayer right then. That's one of the moments I, uh, I said a prayer and I told this aircraft to rise. And finally, right about now, it released me. I came right up over these trees and it let me go. Why did that downdraft finally release me? Honestly, in my heart, I believe that the good Lord uh, was trying to teach me something. And uh, it's one of the few times in my 40-year career that I asked for definite action and help. And uh, I got it. That was a moment that uh, I'll never forget. That was a period in my life where the fun went out of it. It was all work, all the time. And for the next year, I was hyper aware of everything I was doing in a plane. And I just, the enjoyment level went out of it. It wasn't a fun period. Honestly, it took me a whole season. It took almost a year to get that feeling to go away. So I guess it's a trust in yourself. Uh, in your decision-making uh, ability in, in that aircraft. The storm that's been battering the island has dissipated. Great news for a group of hunters that have been trying to get to Eagle Harbor. The weather broke for us this morning. We're actually seeing some sun out, so uh, hopefully we'll be able to sneak these guys in. The hunters are carrying more than 2,000 pounds of gear. Too much weight for one plane to handle, so Peter will fly a second beaver. The planes can now take off, but can they land safely? All that energy built up by the, the storms, it's been building up this swell, and it just doesn't turn off overnight. We've had easterlies now for uh, over a week, upwards of, uh, you know, almost 40 knots. The swell was still quite pronounced. I mean, you head off this direction, the next stop is uh, Antarctica. Many planes have perished by attempting to land in these rough seas. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna make it in that lagoon. Some of the biggest tidal swings in the world, Kodiak beaches can become a float plane graveyard. If we get a really big wave, we get pushed up too high, and then we're kind of on dry land. That's not where a float plane wants to be. Just think about it. If it was pointing towards the beach and started going dry, there's nothing we can do. We have to wait for it to float again. Pull it around, and then get that tail rolled. Get my bow pointed out. Point it out. 
we're definitely getting beat up on the beach a bit. Trying to unload the airplane, and the airplane's rocking up and down. Don't let him push on that elevator. We just don't need to get it too high. was on their side today. The swells didn't beach the planes, and the hunters are finally off to start their adventure. I'm not gonna say there's any glory in this. You learn your trade, it's hard, it's, uh, it's tiring. I guess we ask, why do we keep doing this? I don't know if it's the adrenaline at times, it's just the seeing Mother Nature and her glory around here. I mean, just uh, it's the animals, it's all the awesome people you meet in the villages, and I just think I'm supposed to be doing it. 